What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. My name is Travis. In today's video, we're going to be upgrading the lighting on our double stacked low boy frag system. Now, I'm currently running three SB Reef Lights on the top tank and two Ocean Revives on the bottom tank. Now right here we have two AP700s which I picked up at Reef of Palooza and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, install them on the system here. I'm going to give you guys the programming that I'm currently running as well as the PAR number. So let's go ahead and get started. Now when it comes to installing these lights, I'm going to go ahead and use two of the Kessel AP700 canopy mounting brackets. Uh, now these are pretty simple to install. You're just going to go ahead and pop the rubber plugs off of each side of your Kessel and then just slide this uh, bracket inside. It is notched out so you can have it evenly spaced on both sides of the Kessel there. And uh, it works out perfectly because of the 2x4s that are up inside this rack system here, which you guys will see here in a second. All right, now that our Kessels are ready to be installed, let's go ahead and first remove the SB Reef Lights from the rack system. Now each light is held up by an L bracket. It's pretty easy to remove. And uh, just in case something was to come loose or I was to drop one, I went ahead and put a mesh top over the uh, low boy there, which I use for when I have rasses in the system, as well as a little bit of plywood, uh, just in case a light was to fall. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and remove these and then start installing the Kessels. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here when it comes to installing this light is take a couple measurements on the mounting as well as inside the rack system. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is I want to kind of have this light as centered over that low boy as I possibly can. That way, the light is spread out evenly and the PAR numbers are pretty consistent throughout the entire tank. Now these mounting brackets are going to be held up by multiple screws. In the video here I am showing uh, installing two screws on each side, but when everything was said and done I actually added two more to make sure that it added downward pressure on the mounting bracket just so it didn't wiggle around or come loose over time. Alright, so here's a quick look at the AP700 installed. It's pretty much centered over that low boy and the clearance it just worked out perfectly for the setup that I have. Now, uh, there are additional screws as I mentioned before just to make sure it didn't wiggle around and there's plenty of clearance between the top of the fixture and the 2x4s and the top of the stand where the fans can move air in and out to make sure it stays cool. Now finally, all I did is just a little bit of cable management for the power cord and we're ready to go ahead and start programming. All right, now that our Kessels are installed, let's go ahead and set them up on the router. Now, the first thing you want to do is get into the Kessel app and then activate your Kessel so it can be seen uh, through the app. First thing you're going to do is hit the down arrow and the plus arrow at the same time. On one of your Kessels, you don't want to do both because you want to be able to pair them individually. And then you'll see a blue blinking light. Next thing you want to do is get back into the app, go to your Wi-Fi settings, and look for that individual Kessel. You might have to refresh a couple times, but once you find it, go ahead and click on it and connect to the Kessel, and then get back into the app and continue to follow the directions. All right, so once you're connected to your first Kessel, go ahead and get back into the app and hit the next button. At that point, it's going to prompt you to look for your wireless router. Just go ahead and search on the list there, or hit refresh to find it, and then add in your password. Once you're done with that, go ahead and hit the next button, and now you're ready to uh, go ahead and set up your second AP700. Now to do this, you're going to go ahead and hit set another AP700, and again, you want to activate that light the same way you did the first one with the uh, down arrow and the plus button at the same time. Once the light is starting to blink blue, you can go ahead and get back into your Wi-Fi settings and find that light and connect it the exact same way. Now once you have done that whole process for however many AP700s you want to connect, go ahead and hit the done button. At that point, the app is going to ask you to reconnect to your wireless router. Go ahead and do so and come back into the app and then give it a few minutes to set up all the programming and then you'll be ready to set up your uh, time, lighting schedule, all that kind of stuff in the next step. So let's go ahead and move over to that. I'll show you guys how to set up a very quick, basic uh, kind of time schedule uh, for the app as well as show you guys what I'm currently using and then I'll give you guys the PAR numbers. Now, once your lights are connected, you might want to add them to a group. You don't really have to. You can just leave them in the default if you only have a couple. But I'm going to show you guys how to set that group up just in case you're using uh, several lights. What you want to do is hit the plus arrow at the bottom right there. Go ahead and add group and then simply click on the Kessels you want to add to that group. Rename it and then you're good to go. Now to set up a lighting schedule for these two lights, go ahead and click on the actual uh, graph that's at the top there next to whatever your group light is, and then you can come in here and set up what you want. Now it's relatively easy, you just go ahead and select a time that you want to start uh, either ramping or whatever on your lights. So to turn them on, for example, I'm starting mine at 09, and I'm going to go ahead and set it to a 1%. Now the reason why I'm doing this is I want the lights to kick on, and then at my next point, I'm going to go ahead and use that point to allow the lights to ramp up. So from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., I'm going to have them ramp up just 
25% and I'm going to continue on to probably 11 a.m. here where I get to the actual 50% uh, that I'm doing just for this test programming. Now what you're going to do is just continue that all the way over to however long you want your lights to be and then you can ramp them down. Now this is a very basic setup. They also have uh, templates in there that you can choose from like acclimation, you know, new coral, all kind of stuff like that. You can select whatever templates that are defaulted in this app or you can make your own just like this. So let's go to move on to what spectrum and intensity that I'm actually running on these frag tanks and we'll get the par numbers out for you. All right, so this is the actual uh, lighting schedule and intensity that I'm currently using over the tank. And as you guys can see, I start at 10 a.m., 1%, uh, kind of a darker blue, and then it's going to ramp up to the uh, fourth uh, light color, I guess, blue on the uh, wheel there, which seems to be the best and recommended through a lot of forums there. And uh, I just have it ramp up to 100% when it gets to that actual color, goes through until 7 p.m., and of course ramps back down to the deep blue, and then it's off for the night. Now again, I use a very basic setup. I don't do any kind of lightning or any kind of shadows or fog effects, which they do have in here. I just simply do a very bare bones basic because it is a frag system, and even on my uh, radions, I don't use any of that lightning stuff. I just feel that to be unnecessary. So uh, again, very basic, 100% uh, on both of the AP700s over both of these low boys. So let's go ahead and look at the par numbers. Now when it comes to par numbers, I am very surprised at how much power this LED puts out. Now it is 18 inches above the low boys here, giving us pretty much the maximum spread that you can actually have on an AP700. So uh, these tanks, just in case you're not aware, are 48 inches wide by uh, 24 inches uh, long there, or vice versa, either way, 48 by 24 inches. And again, the light is 18 inches above the tank. So uh, here are the par numbers that I'm getting so far. And uh, yeah, they work out pretty well. I can definitely uh, keep SPS pretty happy in this tank with the numbers i try to shoot around that 250 to 350 range when it comes to sps in a frag system and uh, as you can see pretty much the uh, center most part of the low boys is pretty much good for sps and then on the outside you can see that i put like uh, uh, favias and uh, duncans and torches and stuff like that that don't really require a lot more light and again these are the same par readings i'm getting on the uh, top tank which is primarily sps well, guys, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I answered all of the questions that you guys have had over the last couple months regarding the AP700s and the frag system. Now, if you have any additional questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.